Hello there. Well, I appreciate everyone's input as to how I want to close in the bottom of the uh, porch. And I've decided I'm going to go with the spindle uh, and plywood uh, routine here. What I did is I picked up some plywood and some spindles. And I'll show you what I got here. I picked up some quarter inch plywood. It's not pressure treated. I don't know if it's exterior glue or not, but the one that did have exterior glue, CDX, uh, was very, very rough and it wouldn't look very good even if I redwood painted it redwood. I just laid the plywood up here. I had it cut at Home Depot, 36 inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and spray the edges especially along the bottom with uh, oil base primer so probably some of that primer paint that I used on the van so that it doesn't uh, start wicking in the water so then I'm going to nail it all to the joists here and then I'm going to take and put these balusters on that I'm going to show you right now these here were two bucks a piece. They're two by twos with actually inch and a half by inch and a half. Pressure treated and I went through them all to make sure that they were straight and not warped. And they're going on the outside. After this is nailed up and painted, these balusters will be on the... They'll be mounted. So this is a quarter inch plywood. So they'll still be underneath the... Uh, the rail and they're 36 inches long and I still got a, about a quarter inch to play with down at the bottom and they'll be mounted like this I'll space them out they'll be spaced further than they would be in normal use when there, if there was no plywood here at all these will be painted white so they'll look pretty good accented against the redwood. As you see here, pretending this is the uh, plywood, these will be painted white, they'll really show up good. I may put two on the corner, I bought 12 of them. One here and one here over the plywood. Just on the outside corner and then probably another one right here like that. So this will all be closed in and these will be just put in there. I think it'll look pretty good. I hope. I got all the balusters, 12 of them here, and I'm going to pre-paint them white. But before I even do that, i got to prepare the plywood, which is on the other side. i got to remove these clamps here that you see. These are for the candy canes that we put out there uh, yeah, Christmas time. got to remove this, but before I can put this up here, I'm going to take the skill saw, I'm going to drop a straight edge down here, a piece of 2x4, and I'm going to cut this off as far back as I can get it. As far as I can go is actually where the edge of the 2x8 is right here. So that way water won't accumulate on this from the splashage when it rains and so forth and it will soak into this. That redwood stain that I showed you on the other video will be covering this but I'm going to take and pre-paint these edges with some oil based paint. I'm going to use this stuff right here. This XO Rust, this is the stuff, it's a primer but it's oil based and um, I use this for on the van, you remember this stuff. And I'll just do the edges of that plywood because this stuff here is uh, latex and uh, I don't know how good it is uh, preserving the plywood so plywood is notorious for separating at the edges so we'll put this stuff on the edges let that dry and then we'll put the redwood on here I just made a sample this morning it dries pretty quickly so this will be the color and it matches matches all the deck stains pretty close here as to 
uh, when the time comes to paint this one too, I'll have definitely have enough to do it. And the balusters will get pre-painted with the white. Well, I better get to work. Standing here holding this camera and talking ain't getting this job done today. I'm going to take these can Christmas candy cane clamps off here that I put up every winter. And, uh, because we're going to need the have room for the plywood. So take these off and we got to put a, um, a board across here so that I can have it as a straight edge so I'll cut this, cut this bottom overhang back a little bit. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm putting a straight edge here. And why I'm doing that, so I can cut straight with the skill saw. Now, I don't have an eight foot piece of pine. I need three quarter inch stock. A two by four was too thick.
that clamp down the other end so I can get that adjusted. Still going here. All right. Let's see if we can get this in there now. I think we got it. Now we gotta get one in the middle here. One nail in it now just to hold it into place so I can take care of the other side. That'll just hold it up there. We got a lot of dirt on here from the ground because I painted the edges with that primer paint with dirt stuck to it. Anything behind here? It looks flushed out pretty good.
that's the only thing I can do tonight because the sun will be going down and there's no sun on this side of the house. So. I had to get this done tonight, or today I should say. It's after 5 o'clock, so I'm trying to get this. At least get this part done and then finish up. We got a late start today. It's an after one before I started this thing. Well, today we're working on the side of the deck and we cut out the plywood already. I cut out the plywood, it's quarter inch. We sprayed it with the um, oil base primer. It's very expensive stuff. It's almost five bucks a can. But it's all I had for oil base spray. This enables me to get right in there and get a coat on there so that the plywood don't delaminate. Hopefully it won't. So while this dries, I'll take you to the other side and show you what I have done. As some have mentioned, it would look boxy if I left it this way, but we're not. We're going to put the white balusters in here, right down to here. Now here I'm going to take a piece of wood. I sprayed this with all of this oil base before I put this on there. But I'm going to put a piece of wood in here and I'm going to plane it so that it comes on an angle like this so that when the water splashes on here uh, it'll run off and hopefully not get behind there and cause a problem. All the edges have been painted and what I am doing now is putting this block in here. I pre-drilled a hole so I can use these square drive screws. I had to get a another bit because uh, it, the other one rounded off on me when I was doing the joists up there. So we're going to secure this end. We're going to put one in the middle, one here, and one here because it's impossible to get the drill in here without going on an angle and that's not the way I'm going to do it. Then down at the bottom, I don't have any pressure treated 2x4s, but I do have pressure treated 1x4s. So we're going to take it, like we did here, we're going to put the pressure treated 1x4 here. That'll give me a uh, support for the bottom. If you notice here, I did not nail in that one in that 1x4, and that's simply because I don't want to make any holes in this plywood. I will do all my nailing on the piece that's going to go in here and that will hold it tight against the building. Yeah, we'll stick the camera in the cat food, <laughs> a dry cat food container here and you can watch me do a little work here maybe.
Okay, here's another cat's eye view here of the uh, work in progress. I'm going to commence to nail down that 1x4 pressure treated uh, piece of wood at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it because I've got a ruler in the way, I've got uh, a brush in the way, I've got the drill in the way, but and the nail can in the way. But anyways, let's get started on this thing. First of all, we have a block here to check for flush out. You've seen me use the block many times. And we'll start on this side. And use the block to hold this in so it doesn't shift. Use a number four galvanized common nails. Very hard to nail. I put this in the way. But we have to nail on the ends first because if we don't, if we start in the middle, we're going to be all screwed up. Well, upon closer look here, you can see that I've angled. Now, being that this is going to be hidden inside anyways, I wasn't worried about getting too precise with it. Now, we'll put a nail or two in the middle here. They're all flushed out, so that plywood will go up against it. Same here. This will be a nailer here, but this is not a nailer here. This will be just like the bottom here. The nailer will take place with the piece that I'm going to be putting in on the edge. There'll be some, uh, this is a, oh, about an inch and a quarter. It's not rocket science. About an inch and a quarter. So we'll take some stock. Hopefully I can get a piece eight feet long, but I may not be able to without buying it like everything else, bye, 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 bye. And I'll 45 it. Either drag out my small table saw or I might just use the uh, uh, power planer. I might just do that. If I can get a 2x2 two two and drop it in there. Um, that might be my option. Get a 2x2 two two and 45 it. So that if you're looking here at my finger comes down like this so that the water have a tendency to go out like this. It's not a hundred percent guarantee but it's better than leaving it like this and just corking it and you're going to get water in here and um, being that this is still open you're going to get water coming in here anyways and these floorboards are the two by sixes are pressure treated but I just want to try to protect the plywood a little bit and being that this is being converted over to a uh, porch rather than a deck, we had to cut back on this so we don't have uh, any splashage from the drip edge. The drip edge comes out five and a quarter. Actually, it, uh, they put the roofing on a little further out from the drip edge. So uh, the water runs down and it def definitely clears this. But when you get a driving rain or a wind or something, you're going to get water going here. So we'll do it. We'll fix it up. What I done here is something I should have done here. Uh, this plywood on the front that I put on yesterday is uh, as this two by six rises up just a little bit is wedged in there real tight. And uh, hopefully there's no wicking action. It's taking up water and stuff or warping. Um, here I had a little uh, depression here for the two pieces of 2x6 coming together where I patched. 
patched up a few years ago and uh, I rasp, would rasp that out but it didn't give me enough clearance there's a space here but up here there isn't so not to make that mistake again I put a quarter inch Luan in here and cut this 35 and 3 quarters instead of 36 now she's wedged up tight up here and uh, there's the deck isn't perfect so she's still off the floor of the deck so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to nail this into place right now and then take this piece out well I got the piece in now here's some here's a 2x2 two two that the roofers left for me it's actually a slice down 2x4 this is what we have in our joists in our trailer anyways um, I'm going to get some two, a 2x2 two two from Home Depot so I can do this 8 foot section and what's going to happen is I'm going to take the power planer and I'm going to angle this off so that uh, the water will run off I'll either do that or I'll rip it down on the table saw, but you know I don't want to. I don't really want to dig the table saw out of the shed. It's got too much crap on top of it. It'll take me half the day to get it out of there. But anyways, uh, we need to put something there because as you can see now, I raised this up by that shim that I showed you, so that it won't wick water. But I had to nail this. It was bowed out because of the crisscrosses they were sticking up in the center here a little bit and missing with the nails all over the place here so we're gonna have to cork all this I tried the nail to get it a little more solid I should have left it alone here I only put a nail in the middle and uh, it could use more nailing but it's gonna take me five or six tries with nail holes all over the place to to find a, uh, the crisscross here, no matter how much measuring I do. And this will get the first coat. And while that is drying, I'll hit uh, the second coat on these posts and stuff of white. When we get two coats on this, then we start putting the balusters up. We need two coats on this, and we're going to have to caulk these damn holes where I missed all over the place. The X's come down like this. Why I'm up here, I don't know. But um, it's a mess, so we got to clean it up. Thank goodness for caulking. The difference between a carpenter and a half-ass shoemaker, such as myself, is a carpenter doesn't need caulking. Everything comes out properly. In here I'm going to paint it redwood when I do the rails here. I'm going to sand this a little so I can get the redwood to take to it. It's starting to shape up. It's pretty solid. Hello there. How you doing today? Well, the project continues in between raindrops here. Uh, here are the balusters. There's 12 of them. I take it that I'm going to need 11, but I, I got 12. They've all been inside. I bought them. They were inside. And I stored them inside. And I'm going to paint these on three sides. On the back side, they don't need to be painted because it's going to be up against the redwood. So. What we're going to do is i got to mix the paint a little bit here, get my brush, and I'll start painting these. And when I do, I'll pull these separate here so that I can get on the sides. I think two coats on these will do just fine. And I plan on getting the second coat on those posts over there on that uh, porch. We're going to start painting the balusters now. These are not exactly easy to paint because of the the detail that's in them. It's 
It's not like a straight piece of wood, you know. But it's better to do this now than to try to paint these things when they're on the um, redwood, because it's impossible to. Get it so it's not on the redwood. I'll have to paint all over the place. Um, it might appear that I'm painting the backside too, and I probably am, but uh, the main thing is we want three sides. If we get it on the fourth side, it's not a problem. You're not going to see that, anyways. And this is only the first coat. And um, these are pressure treated, which means that they uh, will not rot. Unfortunately, the plywood that this is going on is ordinary quarter inch plywood. And I've got two coats of redwood on it, but I don't know how well that's going to protect it.